Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Can somebody uh, just uh, make a comment uh, on the page there that um, I'm audible? Would you do that, please? Not getting any response. Uh, can you hear me, please? Thanks for that. Welcome to Morning Prayer from St George's and Clane's Churches in Worcester and thank you for joining us this morning. I'm Reverend Peter Davies, one of the staff team privileged to serve the people of St George's and Clane's in Worcester. Let's take this time of worship and prayer to set our compass in our walk with our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. To guide us in that We'll come before God to worship him in spirit and in truth. We'll hear words of scripture from Psalm 25 and some brief thoughts on that passage. And we'll let that passage lead us in reconciliation. We'll pray for the needs of the world, our community and for ourselves. And we'll bid farewell uh, by going in God's peace and with his blessing. Let's pray together. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A prayer based on words written about 400 years ago by Bishop Lancelot Andrews. Let us pray. Blessed are you, creator of all, to you be praise and glory forever, as your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation. May we rejoice in this day you have made, having wakened and refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence, and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Our reading is from Psalm 25, just a few verses, verses 4 through to 12. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth, all my transgressions, according to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness 
for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who are they that fear the Lord? He will teach them the way that they should choose. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. As children, if we were blessed with having a good dad, did you ever say on holiday something like, Dad, help me with my sandcastle? That picture of your dad on the beach, he probably in the deck chair, newspaper keeping the sun off his face, well, that was his story actually, he was well into his siesta. And you reminding your dad of who he was, your dad. And miracle of miracles, he's with you, straight away, bounces out of his deck chair, battling the incoming tide, bailing the water from your sun castle and its battlements, you get the picture. It's okay to disturb your dad, to remind him that he was your dad, get him to join in the fun. Good dads go for that, don't they? And Jesus invited us to call God our Father by using his everyday language. Uh, Daddy, the word is Abba, Daddy. In some parts of Northern Ireland and in Scotland, you might hear the phrase used, We Daddy. It's a term of endearment. That's Abba, We Daddy. And when I was on mission in Peru some ten years ago now, in a sermon um, on that passage from the Gospels, uh, the priest there translated it as Papito, we daddy, little daddy. That's the confidence that the psalmist has when he speaks to God in today's psalm. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. God hasn't forgotten that he is a merciful God, that he is steadfast love. Right. Hands up, anyone here who's watching, who's perfect. Any takers? Any thunderbolts hovering over your postcode? Stand by. Well, having reminded ourselves of who God is, of his very nature, we need to remind ourselves about our own home truths. That's why the psalmist says next, Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me in your goodness sake, O Lord. I'm sure there might well be transgressions well after our youth. And we can only have confidence even to think of approaching God this way because his very nature is to be merciful. His nature and being is, as the psalmist says, steadfast love. This portion of the psalm, Psalm 25, is about confession. Let's look very briefly at three dimensions of confession. Firstly, there's our relationship with God and ourself as an individual. All our thoughts, um, what we say, the things we do, and the stuff we haven't done that we jolly well ought to have done. Uh, all the things that, how can we say, don't come up to the mark of God's love. And there's our relationship with other people, our neighbour, as well as what we don't do or do regarding them that again falls short of the potential for Christ's image in us. Any chance any of us have been shouting at the TV lately? When the daily COVID-19 press conference comes on, for instance, has the air turned ever so slightly blue? Uh, do the neighbours know what you think about it? I think ours do. 
is that something about how society treats its members? Maybe our response to that, the vulnerable, people who are different. How power and wealth are deployed in society. Thinking of our sisters and brothers in Christ in the United States. An Afro-American man allegedly killed by a police officer and then the outcry that comes the vulnerable people who are different people living under a power and wealth being deployed in some cases against them in their society how do we confess those things to God and the third dimension of confession involves our relationship with ourselves. I think the hardest question sometimes is, how do I forgive myself? We know that God has released us. God has forgiven us. We've made things good with the person hurt, if that's what we've to do. But sometimes the hardest thing is for us, for me, to give myself permission and quite simply let go. But so easily we keep still going around with that harness of sin that God has in fact unbuckled. How do we deal with that? Well the old hymn says, take it to the cross in prayer. Take it to the cross in prayer. Let's do that now. However your week has been going, it's, it's good to come to God and put things right and to go forward in the knowledge of being reconciled to God and God with you and to go forward resolved to be a disciple of Christ, his light in the world. After each short sentence there will be a prompt, Father forgive us, please respond with save and help us. Father, forgive us, save and help us. Therefore, let us confess the brokenness of the world to God our Father and our part in that. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for the brokenness of the world, for how the world has turned away from you, ignoring your loving purposes. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For power seeking its purposes without regard for the weak. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For setting our interests before yours in what we think and to do and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting the siren voice of the world draw us away from you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son Father, forgive us, save us and help us for not loving you, for not loving our neighbour as ourselves. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we respond in words of worship with the words of the Gloria. Join in if you know the words, but if they aren't familiar to you, let them echo in your heart as I say them. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, 
Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. We're going to turn to prayer now. I'll leave a short break between the end of each brief petition uh, for us to add in our own prayers. If you are posting anything, uh, remember to be mindful, please, of uh, confidentiality. After each short prayer, please respond um, with, Hear our prayer, I will say, Lord, in your mercy. Please respond with, Hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for God's wonderful creation, but in its brokenness. We bless you, Master of the heavens, for the wonderful order which enfolds this world. Grant that your whole creation may find fulfilment in Jesus Christ our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the nations of the world and their leaders. Bless and guide the Queen, her Prime Minister, ministers and their advisers, that together with the leaders of all nations we may be godly and quietly governed. Restrain the violence of the peoples and draw the despised of the earth into the joyful life of your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for everyone we are called to serve. From the rising of the sun to its setting, we praise your name, O Lord. May your promise to raise the poor from the dust and turn the fortunes of the needy upside down be fulfilled in our time also, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are sick, for those who care for them, and for all working in medical practice and research and in chaplaincy. Today the diocese is remembering the chaplaincy in the Worcestershire NHS Acute Trust. And therefore we cover them in prayer. Lord, in all times of fear and dread, Grant that we cast our burdens upon you, that you bear us on the holy wings of the Spirit to the stronghold of your peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord, naming in our hearts those for whom we seek healing and wholeness. And we hold sacred the memory of all those who have gone before us, especially those dear and known to us, those recently departed this life, naming them in the quiet of our hearts. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, 
enfold our loved ones who have gone before us. Hold in your loving grace those who will breathe their last this day. And in our grief, bear us with them at the last to heaven's horizon, for your love's sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us pray for ourselves. God of love, breathe into our hearts your gift of love, that our lives and witness shine with the light of Christ. In loving you, loving and serving our neighbours, and cherishing ourselves all for your love's sake. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. A collect prayer for today. Let us pray. Loving God, everything you do and have made and have given us is good. Please fill us with your Holy Spirit so that you guide us to do all the good you have for us to do. And we ask this in the name of Jesus, your Son, who is our Lord and Saviour. Amen. In a moment we will say the Lord's Prayer. Last week in her reflection, Rachel Cramp said how she pauses after each line. It's something that I undertook to do as a New Year's resolution some years ago. Um, I prefer New Year's resolutions that are easier to do rather than ones that aren't, like give up chocolate or lose weight. It's a good way to listen for the Lord to prompt us is Rachel's suggestion and I'm going to suggest that we do that as we pray the Lord's Prayer together now holding a short pause before saying the next line and in that pause hear the Holy Spirit speak to you in your heart and mind as to how you are being prompted to be as Christ to be as you are looking to God, looking to everyone you serve, looking to yourself for your own wholeness. Therefore, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
thank you for joining us for this uh, half hour or so of worship. Um, our next service from Clanes and St George's is on Sunday morning. Please zoom in for that. It'll start at 10.30. And to close with the blessing. The Spirit of Truth lead you into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God and the blessing of God Almighty who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon you, upon your homes, upon your family, upon those who look to you and those to whom you look this day and always. Amen.